Definition of Levitating Balloons by Taya Smith, Ethan Staub, and Angelie McComb. First, we will begin with the background information, our representations, experimental design, and then we will conclude with data, real-world comparison, scientific reasoning, and our conclusion. Things we need to know before performing this experiment is that same charges repel and that different charges will attract. We can find acceleration and mass in our experiment and use those values to find the force. Since that force is equivalent to the electrical force, we can use that found value in the electrical force equation. The goal of the experiment is to find the charges of both balloons. When we assume both balloons are equal, we are able to solve for the balloon's charges. For our system schema, we only included the electrical interaction between the two balloons inside of the dotted lines because that was our main focus, but the Earth will still have a gravitational interaction with each balloon. Our free body diagram has two arrows for gravity and normal force as equal because the balloon is, isn't rising or falling into the ground and our electrical force arrow is larger because the force felt from the fixed balloon is what causes the movement. For our experiment, we inflated two balloons of equal size. We then zeroed out a beaker and placed each balloon inside of it in order to make sure that the mass of each balloon was about the same. We then attempted to create an equal charge of each balloon by rubbing them in wool for about 5 seconds each. We fixed our yellow balloon to the floor with a piece of tape at 0 meters. After, we introduced the red balloon to the system by slowly placing it next to the fixed balloon, but not touching it, and letting go after that point. We then used tracker software to determine the average acceleration of the red balloon once released. We could have created an error by failing to inflate the two balloons with the exact mass or had a human error while attempting to properly track the acceleration of the red balloon. Here's an excerpt of our data table showing the distance x, acceleration, and time as the balloons electrically interacted with one another for reference. Here you can see our average values for acceleration and distance for all three trials. We took the average of all three trials and used those values when computing Q. As you can see, we use the absolute value of acceleration rather than the negative value to find Q, since only magnitude and not direction is considered when computing the charge for Q. In the real world, many examples of this occur. For example, with elementary school science experiments, such as the picture shown of magnets interacting with iron. Similar to our experiment, the magnets of like charges show the repulsion of each other in respect to the electrical interaction. Since we assumed that the charges of the balloons were the same for this experiment, we were able to square the Q in the electric force equation. For the purposes of this experiment, we also assumed that the electrical charges outside of the system are negligible. The data showed us that as the distance between the two balloons increased, the acceleration decreased, which is consistent with Coulomb's law, and considering that a decreased acceleration will also decrease the value for force, which then means that the distance must increase when the charge is kept constant. Although our observed data matches the physics explanation, our data still may not have been as accurate as it could have been because of the human errors mentioned in our experimental design. We can conclude that our red balloon has a charge of about 8.91 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs for our, from our experimental mass and acceleration of the balloon, and that the yellow balloon, which was similarly charged, has equal value since the balloons repelled in our experiment rather than attracted each other.